the moment you've all been waiting for, the Wi-Fi 7 in wall has finally arrived. So without further ado, let's get it unboxed and have a look at some of the specifications. If we open this up right here, we're greeted with the device which is nicely wrapped in here. And straight on the back, we have a PoE in, which is 2.5 gig connectivity. And then we have a couple of ports on the side here. So if we open this up, on this side, we're greeted with a line down the bottom here, which says 2.5G. And we have one P, a single 2.5 gigabit slot and a 2.5 gigabit PoE out. Now with this, there's one thing I will say straight away is to get PoE out of here, you need to make sure you have a PoE plus input. Also inside, we have the mounting template with the level to make sure it's straight. And we have the back plate that we saw on previous models also as well. We have a bunch of different holes in here that you can use to connect to whatever you need to. There's a couple of sets of screws in here that you might need to get connected. We have an ejection tool and we have the normal standard booklet that we have in all the packs. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the specs and price. So this comes in at $149. It's a Wi-Fi 7, but I'm gonna say for now, there's no six gigahertz built into it. And some of you might be asking at this point, well, how can it be Wi-Fi 7 with no six gigahertz? Well, maybe that's a topic for another video. So if you wanna know more about how the Wi-Fi standard works and why six gigahertz is not included in it, then let me know and I can put a video together on something like that. But for this, we have the 2.5 gigabit RJ45 on the back, and then we have the two 2.5 gigabits on the bottom, one being PoE out. There's four spatial streams. You can connect up to 200 plus devices to this. For the MIMO, it's two by two on the 2.4 gigahertz and two by two on the five gigahertz too. The additional feature is the PoE out support and the coverage area is approximately 115 square meters. Now that's obviously very subjective depending on what you've got in the way, the walls, the thickness and any other interference that you may have. Getting this set up is really easy. You can mount the back plate wherever you want. Make sure you've got an RJ45 cable on there and you can go and pop this in like so. And hopefully we should see a white light or a blue light as I've already adopted this. Hopefully this will be appearing right here. So to show you the device that we have right here, I have the U7 in wall connected. I have already adopted this and it's updated running the latest firmware. And we can see down here, we have the 2.4 gigahertz, I'm running at 40 megahertz, and the five gigahertz I'm running at an 80 megahertz channel width. If we go into the port manager itself, you'll see we're greeted with two ports, which are the two on the bottom of the device. We have the first one, which is says PoE in plus data, so you can go and plug whatever you want in. You can change the VLAN, so you can set that to whatever you wanna be, block VLANs, allow them, and you can set the link speed if you wish to do so, and a port profile but we'll leave that as it is for now. And the second port, we have the port, whether you want it active, disabled or restricted. And the main one you're gonna to wanna to look at as I did, I plugged it in straight away and nothing was powering up. I realized that you had to go into here and enable the pass through. So just as a fail safe, just to make sure you don't go and plug something in without it being PoE, Ubiquiti have made sure this setting is off by default. So you don't go and ruin the device by plugging something in that will give PoE power. The rest of the settings are exactly the same as the other port. So fairly simple and straightforward. Just showing you how the ports on the back here work. I have a G5 turret ultra which I can use to connect to this. The ethernet cable is a bit long but it does the job and we can see we're going to use the one with the lightning port on it so we know that's going to have power and hopefully with any luck we see a light that appears right here which is good so we know there's PoE power going into there and then I have one that's connected straight to my computer. Again a slightly longer cable so we'll pull this out and we'll go and plug this into here. So hoping with that, we should get a G5 turret ultra that pops up and we should get a computer that also pops up within the Unify console. So there we go, that's what we expected. We have our desktop here, which is plugged in, which is the machine I'm using right here. And we have a camera that's appeared. Now, if I go into Unify Protect, it's gonna tell me there's a new camera ready to adopt. And you can see that right there, it says the new camera is ready to adopt. So we have the G5 turret ultra that's appeared. So. The PoE does work and you can use this also for a phone as well. So if you have it near a reception area and you need to plug a phone in, you can go and do that. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is just do a bit of testing in terms of speed and range, because obviously you wanna know what sort of throughput and what sort of speed you're gonna get. So I've done some previous tests around my house. I'm gonna imagine this is plugged into my wall and I'm gonna face it outwards towards the area of the house, get the best output from it that I can. I haven't actually done any tuning to this or anything. I've just changed the channel width slightly just to see what I'm getting. So we'll do one test here in just a moment and I'm running open speed test on this machine locally so I can also do a speed test back. Let me show you the map layout in case you haven't seen this before. So I run four different tests 
one in the same room, one at the furthest point on the same floor. And then we go down to the ground floor directly underneath and then we go to the furthest point in the house to see what sort of signals we get. So we have four different tests that we run. And if we run through the first test, I'll explain exactly what the tests are, what I do. So I open up Wi-Fi Man and I show you the signal and throughput. So you'll see the signal in the top in the middle on the left hand side and then the throughput down below. That's the throughput to your gateway. The middle test is a speed test, so you can have a little look. We'll, for this one, we're getting 760 megabits per second down and 267 megabits per second up. And then we have an open speed test. So within this room, I have a computer next to me, which I've connected to the little switch that I have here where I'm testing, and I run an open speed test server on it. Just for clarity, the device that I was testing on was a Pixel 8. I'm not gonna run through all the numbers one by one, but you can pause at any point if you wish to have a look. So we have the test two where we were getting about five 500 megabits per second down and 270 megabits per second up. So still a good speed. And that was probably about seven to eight meters away roughly going through two stud walls. We then have test three, which we're directly underneath. So this is going through the floor down to the bottom floor. You can see some of the results there. The signal is still good. We're getting a good physical speed, good throughput. So still around 500 megabits per second in terms of what you're getting with the open speed test. And then the final one is test four. Now, as I walked into the furthest point, this happens to actually be my kitchen. As I walked into the kitchen, the signal switched from the five gigahertz spectrum to 2.4 because it obviously was too far away to keep on the five gigahertz. And you can see that in the picture right there. And we have the signal around about minus 72 dB. In terms of the speed test, we're on the 2.4 gigahertz network now, so I'm not expecting anything fancy, but 33 megabits per second down. And then when we did the open speed test, it was around about 50 megabits per second down and seven megabits per second up. So did I get whole house coverage? Yes. Is it gonna be a great experience as I move further away? Probably not. But it's also worth keeping in mind that something like this is designed to be used within the same room. So if you wanna look for something that's gonna give you whole house coverage or slightly better coverage throughout the location of where you are, you may wanna take a look at some of the flagship APs that are available, which will give you better coverage. I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier and it's where this device is kind of designed for. So if you have requirements of having the additional cables in here. If you want to power something like a camera or you want some network connectivity or do a machine of some sort that doesn't require PoE power, then you have these two inputs here. And you want somewhere discreet and quiet to place this. So if you need to put it in a wall socket or wherever you want to put this and hide it out of the way, you can do that. This is great for office locations if you have a reception area and you need something like plugging in a phone and you need the Wi-Fi in that area, something like this is great. Now, one thing I think a lot of people are gonna pick on straight away is the fact that this only comes with two 2.5 gigabit ports and looking at the U6 in wall and the U6 E in wall, that came with four ports, that came with four gigabit ports previously. But this is the option they have gone with. For $149, you can get your hands on one of these. Well, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below what you think of the new in wall. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.